Hey, it's Alyssa Bryden with Virtual Heights Accounting. I'm going to bring up uh, our zero account demo account here. We're going to show you how to set up your conversion balances. So if you're setting up a new zero account, uh, you know, we mean we've set up a few items. We've got the bank connected, things like that. Um, one thing that's important to do, and again, this has already been set up, but um, to, uh, as far as the chart of accounts have already been brought in and all that kind of stuff, is to set up your conversion balances. So if you go into account, Accounting advanced and down here, conversion balances. These are the balances that you're bringing in from your previous uh, accounting accounting software. So if you are converting from Sage or you're converting from QuickBooks Online or whatever other software you are converting from, this is, uh, or if maybe you were just using even Excel and you just want to start with some opening out balances, um, maybe that's what you were doing. You were a sole proprietor for just kind of doing everything in Excel and now incorporated business, but you know, when you set it up, you had money in the bank account and uh, um, some things to set up. So what what do you do at that point? Well, these are your conversion balances. If you're converting from another software, obviously this could be quite extensive. You might want to put in all of the details of your last year end. Maybe if you're converting, if, if April 30th is your year end, um, or I guess in this case, uh, let's so let's see if you put in a conversion date here. Say you want to convert at April 2022. If March 31st was your year end, you'd put put your full trial balance as at your year end date. Okay, for every single account that you had at that point. Um, an important factor to consider is that the bank account balance needs to match the actual statement balance, not necessarily the trial balance that uh, you were providing from your from your printout at March 31st for your year end. Um, the reason for this is that it is used then to bring in a statement line balance and from then on it will track the kind of accounting balance which could potentially be different. For example, in Canada we do have checks. If you issue a check, um, it you could issue it today, but you're going to then mail it your uh, the person receiving it may take weeks to deposit it to actually get to a bank or they don't necessarily maybe use their phone to do e-deposits and things like that. So that check might have been posted to the bank because, you know, you posted that you paid that payable uh, when in fact you paid it. But um, on, on the flip side, it actually might not clear the bank account um, until they, they it won't clear the bank account until they actually deposit the check themselves. So um, that's called an outstanding item. And so what we would do is we would put uh, the actual bank statement there. Um, and then the kind of trick that I uh, kind of use is to create a conversion account um, and just outstanding items at conversion. And so if your bank account is different and there's a reason, maybe an outstanding deposit or whatever it happens to be, um, you can create this and uh, code. Maybe you had a outstanding check um, for $600 that was lowering that, that amount. So this is the actual statement balance, but on your trial balance, because of this outstanding check, your actual trial balance said $3,530.98, which is that minus 600. Um, so this is how you would put it in. Your account's receivable. You're gonna have to put your actual amount. Maybe if it was, oh, you were owed $1,200 uh, and maybe on here you owed 15, uh, let's say 15, actually let's, yeah, let's do 1500 as just something easy. And then, um, you know, if you would code wherever the rest went, you know, maybe it was to retained earnings that that difference uh, was, was there from the prior year. So maybe this is your, your balances. So you'll want to get your trial balance. Make sure these, both of these equal, there shouldn't be any adjustment in, in this. Your debits should equal your credits. Once you click save, this will then start the balances, uh, going to the correct accounts. It will, however, ask you, Hey, you've just said that there's 1200 bucks in this, uh, in, in the accounts receivable, but there's no invoices. So at that point you could, we could import, there is ways to import if you have multiple receivables. In this case, um, we're just gonna put in one 
we'll put Henry construction and um, we're going to put it to sales uh, and have our, our tax rate in there. It was inclusive. Uh, the tax rate was set to inclusive. This is due in 30 days. We have our standard bra branding on there, which is in invoice settings. That's how you set that up. Can hit click. Oh, sorry. Uh, construction services. All right. So then once you hit save, um, it's going to be okay because you've entered that amount. Again, there are ways that if you um, if if you're having issues because you have maybe 30 receivables and you want all of them in there, I'll show you the way to quickly do that uh, in a moment. But you would click next. It's going to then indicate, hey, you don't have this bill either. So you could enter a bill. Uh, we're going to say Alyssa was owed some money. Uh, counting services. All right, so that's how that would work. You click save, and then you're going to be good to go. All right, so then once you're matched, it's going to let you click next. Now everything is matched. It'll allow you to save. Um, it, these won't be what they're called posted to the specific subledger accounts until this is saved. Um, so you'll want to make sure you do that. So as I mentioned, there is a way to get multiple uh, invoices in. If you go to business sales overview, um, you can actually use this import feature right here uh, to import sales invoices and uh, there's a template that will provide uh, to to be able to put in and then that way you can actually do a bulk import to get those past sales invoices in there however if you also have a lot of going on depending on what uh what firm you're moving from, or what firm you're moving from what accounting software you're moving from if you're moving from quickbooks online if you're moving from sage uh zero does have a service available right now um again this is, this is june 2022 um and it's called move my books and so reach out uh, to us or to zero about move my books they do have some specials and um rates to uh to get you set up on move my books and and are currently offering the services to get some of your past data from those other softwares into zero if you don't want to do this, this is kind of a standstill conversion where you're not entering past data other than just the basics of what you need, which would be the accounts receivable accounts payable owing at that at that time. Uh, however, if you actually want some transaction detail, you may be able to get that in there. So so reach out to zero, check out move my books, uh, reach out to a zero advisor ask them about that and uh and you might be able to actually get more than just you know the standstill trial balance uh conversion in there depending on if that's something you need all right so hopefully that helps you uh set up your conversion balances in zero thanks have a great day